Okay, I'm going to do examples one and two together because they are both just basically straightforward and, and don't even require much time to do so. Vertical and horizontal lines need to be recognized for what they are. A vertical line so we know what things look like, in case we don't know this, hopefully we don't know this, but a vertical line looks like that, a horizontal line looks like that. If you ever forget, the horizon is out there, like if you look along the, the, the earth, the horizon's flat, like this line, and the other one's vertical. So, if you see a vertical line, the x-intercept, where it crosses the x-axis, we're going to call A, the answer is x equals A x equals a. x equals is part of the equation. It must be written. If you just write a, you're wrong. All right. So if it crosses through 2, the answer is x equals 2. If it crosses through 7, the answer is x equals 7. If it's the y-axis, it crosses through 0, it's x equals 0. All right. So it's going to be x equals whatever number it crosses. Horizontal line, same deal, except now where does it cross the y-axis? The answer is y equals whatever that number is. So if we look at example 12.1a. Write the equation line. Every time you graph on graph paper, by the way, which is in the second cabinet um, from the window there, if you don't have graph paper, you should grab some. Some of you have been drawing these graphs by hand, not using a ruler and just kind of slapping stuff down and the lines are all weird and looking. Use graph paper and a straight edge when you're graphing. Anyway, when you're graphing, you draw a y-axis and x-axis. You label those axis, axes with the letters x and y. The x is the horizontal, the y is the vertical. <coughs> Always, when you graph lines, make sure your graph looks like that. Okay, the point where they cross is the origin, and this here is the graph line over here. We can see it's very much vertical. Okay, so a non-slanted line is either vertical or horizontal. First, we'll make the determination: is it vertical or horizontal? It's a real simple thing to do a non-slanted line. Which axis does it cross? X. Where does it cross at? Negative three. If the line is not slanted, just answer those two questions. Which axis does it cross? Where does it cross? That's your answer. If we look at 12.1b, I'm going to go two pages here. We have a non-slanted line, right? Here's my x-axis, here's my y-axis, which they've both been labeled on my graph, which I do every single time I draw a graph. I always put x and y on there so that Mr. Klein, when he's grading your papers, can see if your papers turn some weird direction. I can always go back and know exactly how it sets. It's a non-slanted line. Which axis does it cross? Y. Very good. Here it is. It crosses the y-axis. Where does it cross at? Negative four. Negative four. That's how you find the equation of a non-slanted line every single time. What axis does it cross? Where does it cross? That's the answer every time. All right? Suppose I'll move on to 12.1c. Also, they're all 12.1, so I should probably renumber those for next year. I don't know. We'll see. For a slanted line, you can see that this, the process is a little bit longer. All right. Determine the y-intercept of the line. We're going to call it B. Y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis. Right. Pick two points that lie on the line. It doesn't have to be the y-intercept, but you can. Two points. When I say two points, pick like 2 comma 3 or negative 1 comma 4. Don't pick 1.37 comma 2.99. Don't pick that point. Try and pick nice little points that it's right on nice little integer values. All right. At this point, we'll be getting those uh, at least two on every graph. They'll be there. All right. Determine the rise and run from one point two or from point one to point two. Either one could be point one, either one could be point two, it doesn't matter. I like to go from left to right. So if I had two points, let's say I pick this one and this one, this would be point one, this would be point two. So I go up and down, then left to right. right. Slope is rise over run, that's M. M equals a number that goes there. B equals a number that goes there. Your equation is always <laughs> y equals mx plus b. If it's slanted, there will be a y and an x in your answer. If you leave the y or the x off, you're now looking at a horizontal or vertical line. Both letters must be there. So your job is to find numerical value of m, numerical value of b. That's the whole process. So if we try this out here, write the equation of the line. We can see it's not horizontal or vertical. It is slanted. All right. Job one, find the y-intercept. Looking at this line, one, two, three, that's the y-intercept, right? So B equals 3. That's how you do step 1. Use your eyes, count, 
Nothing more difficult than that, okay? People mess up on that step. I don't know why. One of my faults as a teacher is not knowing why people can't count this way. I don't know. I teach high school math, not, not first grade. But people do that, that part wrong. Maybe they forget what they're supposed to do. Sometimes people give me the x-intercept instead of the y-intercept. I don't know. Y-axis, where it crosses the y-axis, that's the number. Here's 0. Up is positive. Positive 1, 2, 3. That's how you find B every single time if it's on the picture. Okay. Down the road, we're going to get lines that cross up here somewhere that, that you can't see where it crosses, then you have to use a little algebra to find B. All right. Step two, pick two points. I've already got one. Okay. That's not a good one. That's not a good one. That is a good one. Not good, not good, good. Those are three points. You just need two. I don't care which two you use, which two you want to use. You want to use blue and purple, purple and purple, blue and the other purple. Somebody tell me. <coughs> blue and purple. Which purple? That's purple. purple. This one? Yeah. All right, so we're going to call this point one and call this point two. All right. Doesn't matter. Pick two points on the line. It doesn't matter which two points you pick. Okay? Pick integer value points. That's important. But it doesn't matter which integer value points you pick. All right. Now, we want to determine the rise and the run. So I want to go from point one to point two, and I want to go either vertically or horizontally to get there. So if I'm here at point one, I want to get to the right level of point two, I have to go one space up. It's not thick enough. I can't see it. Let's go that thickness. Oh, yeah. We can see that. All right. And then I'm going to go horizontally to the other point. That's what rise and run are. How far up or down do you have to go rise? How far left or right do you have to go run? Okay. When you're moving, you're moving in a either positive or negative direction for rise and run. So if I'm going from here to here, I'm going up one space. Going up is a positive move. My rise is positive one. Again, rise is just how much vertically we've changed. Going up is a positive movement. Going down is a negative movement. Okay. Then when I go from here to here, now I'm here, and I want to go from here across to here, one, two, three spaces to the right, that's positive three for a run. Okay. Let me tell you what some people do wrong. Some people go here, and then they go there, and they meet over here somewhere. So they have a rise of positive one, they're going backwards three to get there, but they're meeting here. You want to go from the graph, up or down, left and right, back to the graph. You want to start on the graph, you want to end on the graph. And you want to always make your movements to make that happen. So I had to go from here to here up. That's positive. Then I'm here, and i got to go here to get back to the graph. That's also positive. I could have also, if I really felt like it, a different color here. I could have started at point two, going back to point one. I go down one. That's negative one. And go left three. That's negative three. Still negative one over negative three is positive one third. And positive 1 over positive 3 is positive 1 third. Either way you do it, you get the right slope. It doesn't matter which point you go from and to. Just do it correctly. So that's what step 2 was, pick the points. Step 3 was the rise and the run part. Step 4 is to write your answer. M equals 1 third, positive 1 over positive 3. Okay. So 2 and 3 are steps done on the graph paper itself. Step 4 is done by writing that down. Once we've done steps one and four, our final answer, y equals mx plus b, is the structure. m goes there, b goes there. So the answer is y equals one-third x plus three. Most common mistake people make, they don't write y equals. They just write one-third x plus three. It's not an equation. They leave the x off, y equals one-third plus three. That's a horizontal line at ten-thirds. It's not a slanted line going through 3 and all that stuff. So make sure the x is there. Make sure the y equals is there. Make sure it's an equation. Okay, Slanted lines always have this type of structure for final answer. Horizontal and vertical lines always have either y equals number horizontal or x equals number vertical. All right, And that is graphing or writing the equation of a graph in a nutshell. That's the, the three possible things that can happen. These two are really simple. This is only simple. Not really simple. All right. Count. Pick your points, count again, put this one over that one, write your answer.